Thank you for the opportunity to coming into your home today, wherever you're watching this. And our theme is, what do you think about the Christ? Which is a question that Jesus posed. And, uh, you know, when you look at that on the surface, you may say, well, Christ, Jesus Christ, everybody knows about that. Well, uh, th there's an enormous treasure here. And um, I don't think I've ever been involved in producing TV programs where I'm so concerned, how will I be able to say and share this enormous revelation? Because we're casting a grand vision here. And though the words Jesus Christ are so familiar, I promise you, the revelation is, is brand new to many. When, when the Lord first showed me this, I was like in a daze for several weeks just meditating on it. Well, anyhow, I'm not going to give you any more than that. We're going to get into it very shortly. Uh, uh, Dean Morris is here. How, how are you doing, Dean? Good. Always good to be with you. Yes, I've been teaching this now. You know, anytime I'll stop and go to you, you better get some fresh insight. I'll be ready. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be looking for your input. And Tyna, you're here. Good to see you, Tyna. Oh, nice to be here. You were here two programs ago. Yeah. And shared. you look very lovely. I think this is what I gave you for Christmas, isn't it? I'm glad. I'm glad oh, you're... good to reveal it to everybody. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm glad. But um, I was thinking, you know, we were talking and you, you were talking. I, I can hear you sometimes. I, if you work from home, I'm in one side of the house and you're the other, but I yeah. sometimes here and you hear me that you're talking to partners and uh, uh, it's so gratifying to see how people believe in this gospel task that we are doing don't you find the same thing oh absolutely and how people are so interested and how they want to be part of it and how they see their part in it yeah and that is that that is tremendous and that is no illusion that's reality because mm -hmm. without partners being involved oh. uh, the, 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 so they can very well see themselves in yes it. Yes, and so that's uh, many times we talk about that. And uh, of course, what has happened and what's going to happen, what we do currently, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. Well, it's gratifying that we have this culture that I think we developed in our ministry. We don't feel like it's such a burden to do something for the Lord or to be involved or even give an offering, but it's a privilege. Mm -hmm. And then, as you said, people feeling that. Oh, yes, they, they very much do. And, and uh, it is I, I can see that it is even more important for them. Everybody, this COVID thing has that we, ha we are facing in the world, it has sort of brought everything yeah. so much more real and and the urgency of it yeah absolutely well we want to hear from you please send your prayer requests let us know how we can pray and believe god with you there's such faith coming in our hearts as we talk about this powerful christ and then we pray in in christ's name and I just want to say we have this, uh, the Christ vision, and you're in it. This is three hours of teaching. I've been running short every program, so I can only give you little nuggets. And there's a few things that I have taught that I think are as revolutionary as this. And so this is an enormous treasure, and you will be able to receive that. Well, so get ready now, Dean. I might go to you. I can't say the same thing to Tyna. She's my <laughs> wife, but who knows, Tyna? I might ask you something, too. So, so don't, <laughs> don't, uh, don't feel too sure, secure, but you're sitting there now. Well, it's great to be with you. So Jesus said, Matthew 22, 42, what do you think about the Christ? And we've been answering some of this. We've been saying... I'll take this in. Christ is the alpha before all things. Not just the beginning of things, but before all things. And in him, everything consists and is upheld. It's almost like at the airport, the control tower manages how everything moves. And, and, and we talked about how scientists can't even explain how everything is held together. He, Christ, is the upholder of all things. So it's not just the story of Bethlehem and Jericho and Jerusalem and Capernaum. Uh, yes, the Christ was revealed in Jesus, but the Christ is now in, in us. Then we talked about nature from the limitless universe to the minutest quark and subparticle and well, you say, what's a quark? And some, well, that's like even smaller than the atoms and the molecules and the protons and the neutrons. All of it, from the, from the greatness of space to the smallest particle, declares the wonder of Christ. And then we, we started, but we didn't get very far. Christ, the light of the world, lights up the universe, and he lights up the path of everyone coming into the world. In fact, light is a witness of Christ. You know, on the first day of creation in the creation story, God said, let there be light. And then Jesus says, 
that he's the light of the world. And then he says that we, his followers, we are the light of the world. I want to show you a very interesting picture that was released April 2019. I think the control room has it. This is a picture of a black hole uh, in the universe. And uh, astronomers say this is the first ever image of a black hole, and it's about 40 billion kilometers across that picture. That, you know, that, that's three million times the size of the Earth. And, and the, they believe this black hole is 500 million trillion, whatever that means, Taina, <laughs> yes. away, photographed by eight telescopes. And, and the hole, let's show the picture again, the, the, the black hole is larger than our entire solar system. That hole in the middle there looks like a donut with a hole in it. And it has a, a mass that is six and a half billion times greater than our sun. Now, why did I show that to you? This was a sensation. Pretty well all the most prestigious newspapers had that picture on its front page in April 2019, because this was the first photo of a black hole. And, and this is supposed to be millions of trillions of kilometers away. So look at the picture again. They, they, they're helping me great. So what's that light? What is the light around the black hole? Well, back to me now. Professor Falke, who was the head scientist, said, the head astronomer of this group of astronomers that they were photographing this, we don't understand how this light is generated. We don't understand it. Look, look at the picture again. So there is no scientific explanation that can really tell us where did that light come from. Now think about this. We're dealing with something big here. God said, let there be light. People have laughed and said, well, you know, it doesn't even say the sun was created yet and he just spoke the light. Obviously, that light you saw around that black hole was not caused by any sun. So there's a light. And Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. This is a, you see the parallel of something so great in nature that the greatest astronomer says, we don't understand it. We can't complain it. We, we can't, we can't uh, explain it. It's not complain it, explain it is the word I was looking for. Uh, we, we can't explain it. We don't know where it comes from. So don't tell me that our minds can understand everything. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. Now, we could talk about spiritual light. We could talk about the light of salvation. Let me say something about light in general. I want you to, they're going to put this on the screen, this sentence. It's very important. I gave it to them in advance. Light is less what we see directly and more something by which we see all other things. Leave it up there for a moment. Have you ever tried to look straight into the sun? Don't do that. You could go blind. So light is not so much what we look at because the blazing light of the sun is too much for us, but it helps us to see everything. We have light in this studio, which makes me see your face clearly, Tina. And I see Dean over here and we see shadows even so much more. Now, this is an artificial light in the studio outside. The way you see the tree and the shadows, you need to have the sun. Without that, you see nothing. So I say again, light is less what we see directly and more something by which we see everything. And that's a picture of Jesus. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And when we see him, when he lights up our path, we see everything. We see why are we here? What's the purpose of life? Where are we going? You, you know, how can I make sense of everything? We see who God is. We see who we are. We see and we understand our place in the universe. And we, when we see the Christ who upholds all things, that he is the anointed one in him, all things consist. We, 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 you know, sometimes we made this so small. We made the anointing like a feeling. Oh, I feel the anointing. Thank God you can feel it. I appreciate that. But the anointing, the Christ is so much more. It, it's, it's by him we understand ourselves and the world. 
We understand how we are loved. We understand even in our darkest moment when we don't feel very lovely, we're loved. Oh, that, that's why we say, look to Christ. Because life will make sense when you look to Christ. It says in John 1, 9, the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. That's describing Jesus Christ. In another place, it says, in him we live and move and have our being. Oh, Jesus Christ is so big. No, no church can say that they own Jesus Christ. He is for the world. I mean, in Colossians 3, 11, it says, Christ is all and in all. And let's just hold that for a moment. Just, just to be safe, I put Colossians 3, colon 11 before that. No, they, they put, well, it's there on the screen. I'm looking at the little side screen so I can see what you're seeing at home. Christ is all and in all. Now, if I just put that there without the reference from Colossians, you would say, I, I think Peter is stretching it. Christ is all and in all. That sounds almost pantheistic. Sounds like, you mean everything is Christ? I didn't say that. I say that he is in all. He upholds all. He is the center of all. And he transcends all. That, that's the difference between a pantheistic religion that says everything is God and God is everything. The gospel is that, yes, he upholds all things, but he transcends all things. He is Lord and Christ. I'm getting so worked up here that we're going to pray for prayer requests today. Dean and Tina, we're going to pray in the name of this Christ. Mm -hmm. I can feel almost goosebumps just saying it. In the name of this Christ, we're going to pray for prayer requests. Okay, I, I better calm down here, Dean. Do you have anything that came to your mind while I, while I just get my bearing? I, I hope you feel it at home. You, you see, I said I was in a daze for weeks when God began to show me that the prayer in the name of Christ, it's, it's not just some mantra or some phrase that we add at the end of the prayer. We say, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. No, the, 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 the upholder of the universe is involved in this. Okay, Dean, I, I gave you a moment to think there. You, you know, I remember the first time that I heard you share this about Colossians 3, 11, that the Christ is all and in all. Mm -hmm. And for so many years, I hate to say it, but I have to admit it, I always used to view the word Christ as Jesus' last name. I hate to tell you that, but <laughs> I didn't quite understand what it was. And uh, then when you understand Christ, how, he's the, how he upholds all things, so I, I remember after hearing this, I would go outside and I'd say, well, here's a tree and Christ upholds this and mm -hmm. Christ upholds the, blade of, the blades of grass and Christ upholds every individual. And it just puts into perspective how big and how important Christ really yeah. is. Mm -hmm. Well, so you used to think that Christ was Jesus' last time. At least Tyna knew it was meant the anointing, <laughs> so you were further ahead of me. <laughs> well, well I, I have to say the, the churches and ministries I was involved with, we, we talked about Jesus, but we never really talked about the Christ part of it. Yeah. And so it was just kind of the unknown type thing. It happened to me well, when the Lord first gave me this was in the summer. And I remember Tyna, you and I were sitting at that time, there was three big tray, trees Oh, yeah. We don't live there anymore in that no. place, but there was three. And the squirrels were running up and down. And yeah. you and I were sitting there. Let, let's just hold hands here. <laughs> we sit like this and you have your cup of coffee on the one hand. You know, Come on, <laughs> yeah. pretend you have a cup of coffee and I have mine here. And we have a little table there, a little armrest. And, and we'd be looking at the squirrels and I'd say, look, Tina, Christ upholds even those squirrels. Mm -hmm. and, and you'd be looking at me like, have you lost your marbles? <laughs> but after a while, I kept, I kept oh, preaching yeah. this to you, and, and you were saying, yes. yeah, the wonder of it struck us. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. I tell you, okay, I better look at the clock here because it's ticking. <laughs> so let me give you another nugget of this. At the end of time, everything is put under the feet of Christ, the omega. The beginning of time, the alpha, End of time, the Omega. We talked about that in the other program. And, and then the eternal Christ, th this from beginning, no beginning, no end, from before time till time shall be no more, was this Christ was poured into the body of Jesus 2,000 years ago. Christ in the flesh. That's the essence of the Christian faith. That's what we believe. Christ, the eternal one, has come in the flesh. But we have also said if the Christ vision is only about one person two years, 2,000 years ago, it's limited. I mean, we can, we can talk about 2,000 years ago, you know, this happened, and, it, you know, he was anointed, Jesus was anointed, and, and he was Jesus the Christ and all that. But it kind of limits us. It, it's, it's way back there. 
And that's what religion specializes in way back some time. And we can have Christmas and Easter and we have different celebrations. But, but Christ in this grand vision, and that's what this is about, this Christ vision, it says, and you are in it. You are included in this. You are in the Christ vision. That's what makes it exciting because it's now. Dean, it's not 2,000 years ago in Capernaum. It's now. It's here on this telecast. We, we're going to pray and believe God with you today. Then I, I give you another point here just to summarize what we've talked about. When darkened minds are enlightened, sin's power is broken, and we discover our identity in Christ. When we see who God is, when we see who we are, we begin to connect the dots. We see that I, I've been... I've been upheld by Christ. In him I move and live and have my being. And now he's been revealed to me. And it removes fear of devils and darkness. You know, I've discovered this, that all over the world, many people, you'd be surprised, they can be driving fancy cars, they can have nicest clothes, they can have great wealth and education. But people live in fear. Many do, not all. But many, no matter how much education they have, they live in fear of evil powers. And, and so when we see Christ, we are freed from this. It says in Colossians 1.13, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Then it says again, I'm going to go to this. I think I quoted it a couple of days ago, but I, I said it's too much to dissect. I'll try to do a little bit more this time. It says in Colossians 1, Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all of creation. By him all things were created that are in heaven and on the earth, visible and invisible, thrones and dominions, principalities and powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he's before all things, and in him all things consist. I read it fast so that I wouldn't, wouldn't stop because I wanted to... Not, not take it point by point. He's the image of the eternal God. The, an image is like, uh, the Greek word is icon. He's the engraved picture. He's the mold. God, the invisible one, has never been seen. There's never been an, a, a physical exact likeness expression of God except in Jesus Christ. You could say God sent a, an icon, a photo of himself in flesh and blood. The, the great Jehovah, the great Elohim, of the Old Testament, the creator of the world, came in the flesh, and he's the firstborn. Not firstborn in chron chronology, because he's before all things. Jesus is first in honor, dignity, ownership. You know, Joseph was not the firstborn, but he had the coat of the firstborn. Jesus is the creator. He's before all things. And, and, and what, what really blesses me so much is that when I'm teaching all this and I'm quoting Colossians and I'm quoting Ephesians and I'm going to Corinthians, you know the guy who wrote all this? 30 years, even less before he wrote this, he thought Jesus was an imposter. He thought that he, he thought Jesus is a fake. Jesus isn't even real. And then he had an encounter with Jesus the Christ, and now he says he is number one, numero uno, the head of all creation, all principalities and powers, angels, demons, whatever it is, they are subject to Jesus Christ. You know, I, I, some Christians, pardon me for saying this, I should refer to Dean because he's my ex, he's the resident expert on all strange things in the body of Christ. <laughs> so, so. Uh, uh, sorry for that, Dean. That is <laughs> quite a title. <laughs> you know, but I say this, and, and, and let me let me be very serious, but because because uh, uh, even Elijah could joke a little bit in the middle of a miracle <laughs> happening. So forgive me. I hope, but but some people have a fixations on demons. They, they are fixated. It's it's laughable if it wasn't so sad to be afraid of evil powers. Every created thing was created by Christ. Do you think Christ is a match for evil powers? We, we don't see the universe as two equal powers are battling. Here's, here's the power of darkness, and here we have the power of the light. And You know, some, some people 2,000 years ago felt like that. The, uh, the, the community there where, where the uh, uh, 
uh, Dead Sea Scrolls were found, they kind of had that idea there was two powers and who's going to win is a matter. It's not a matter of a question who's going to win. <laughs> Christ has already won. And, and God never separated himself from the creation he loves. So don't have a devil phobia, but, but get focused on Jesus. All energy is centered in him. He's the forgiver, the restorer, the healer, the provider. He is the indwelling Jesus. We can't even talk about Jesus Christ in correct grammar. You know, uh, Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. You know, that's grammatically incorrect. The correct grammar would have been for Jesus to say, before Abraham was, I was. <laughs> before Abraham was, I was. But he says, no, before Abraham was, I am. Mm. He's saying, I'm outside time. This is the Christ, eternal, present tense, unbegun before all beginning. You know, when, when Jesus was starting to t tell people this, they wanted to stone him. They said, this, this is too much. Oh, friends. Have I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be able to finish this. I had much more to say, but I'm, I'm running out of time. But isn't that something that the person who gave us this, Paul, just 25, 30 years earlier, had said, Jesus is an imposter. He's a fake. And now he encountered Jesus Christ. What do you think of that, Tina? I think that it gives hope for each one of us that, you know, <laughs> whatever we have been, when we see the truth, that changes us. Well, that's true. I mean, I, I never get tired of hearing your testimony. You encountered God's love. You encountered Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. That's why you are where you are today. <laughs> yeah, imagine where I was. <laughs> you wouldn't have been my wife if you didn't. So. No, but, no, but I mean, you had an encounter with Jesus Christ. Yeah, I have to be, yes, exactly. Yeah, and that changes, that changed me. Oh, and that changed you, everybody. And that, Dean, you were involved in some real dumb religion. I'm not going to go into that right now. <laughs> sure. You don't have no time to not acknowledge it. But you had an encounter with Jesus Christ. That's what made the difference, right? Absolutely. When, when you see Jesus Christ, it changes everything that you saw before. Yeah. Mm. This is, and if you've been afraid of evil power, send in your prayer request. We, we, we're going we're gonna to lay hands on that. And we're going to say we, we, we break this spiritual darkness. Some people say, well, do I need deliverance, Pastor Peter? Well, you may be delivered, need deliverance from stupid religious ideas that made you think that these evil powers are so strong. You may need deliverance from a mindset that credits mm. the devil and evil powers with all kinds of abilities to manipulate humans. So get delivered from that and see this eternal Christ so powerful. I, I, maybe you say, I want to be like, like Saul of Tarsus who became Paul and encountered Jesus. Why don't you call on Jesus right now? Dean, look in that camera over there, whichever one is assigned to you, and just invite people and, and pray for people. I'll give you just a few moments, but, but do it right now. Well, right now you can just uh, ask Jesus right into your life to experience him right now. So let's just... Go ahead and invite him in right now together, right where you're at. You can just say, Jesus, I want to encounter you. I believe in you. Show me who you really are. I believe that you died on the cross for me, rose again from the grave, defeated death, and give me life. So if you did that, I just want you to know that Jesus is right there with you. He'll never leave you, never forsake you. And he totally changes the way we see everything. And you can see on the screen there the material. We want to send that to you. It's free, and it will just help you to get started in this Jesus life. And so, and, and then, uh, so that's free. You just have to can text me. You can just, because you don't need to give any credit card information or anything. We just send it to you. Just give me your contact information as so you can text it or call it or online. And also, this is available. And I feel like I'm running short every time. So, so little time, so much to say. So get this revelation. I think it will have a profound effect on you. We are going to pray in this mighty name of Christ who upholds all things for you today. But first, take a look at this. It is less than a cup of coffee, less than a chocolate bar, less than the smallest bag of chips. And yet $1 per day makes a big impact for the gospel. Can you spare a dollar a day to reach someone who has never heard of Christ? With just $1 per day, $360 a year, 
you will help World Impact Ministries reach millions who do not know that Christ came, died, and rose again for them. They do not know that they are unconditionally loved by God. Jesus said, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Yes, the harvests, the people are hungry, eagerly waiting for the bread of life. Over the course of one year, one dollar per day gives the gospel to 400 individuals. One dollar a day trains 14 pastors in a gospel revolution seminar. One dollar a day sponsors one Bible college student in a third world country. One dollar a day provides follow-up for 1,200 new believers. Because of Christ and because of people without Christ, please give one dollar a day or however much you can spare. Pre-authorize your monthly gift of $30 or more on your bank account or your credit card. Do it because God's love, as big as the whole world, compels you. Call now, 416-745-1820, or make your monthly commitment online at give.peteryoungren.org. That's it. God's love, as big as the whole wide world, compels you. And we need your help right now. We, we haven't talked a lot about what we do, but we're doing a lot right now. And if people aren't standing with us, I'm not saying this to make you feel bad, but the fact is then our, our hands are tied behind our back and we're not able to carry it out. But thank you for everybody who is with us. And so please go online to give or call the number on your screen, but just know that you are urgently needed right now. We're going to pray. I was just looking at so many of the prayer requests here from... Uh, the Yukon Territories, from Calgary, Alberta, I see here, from uh, Victoria, British Columbia, from uh, Mississauga here in Ontario, Kitchener, Ontario. I see here from Quebec uh, City and Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and all over the country. We, 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 uh, Kitchener here, all over. God loves you so much. Let's pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we bring every one of these prayer requests right now, every heartache, every sickness, every seeming impossibility. We bring it to you, Lord, in the name of the Christ who upholds everything, in whom everything is. And, and, and we pray in the name of Jesus, and we thank you that we have that which we asked. Amen. Well, keep calling. Let us hear what God has done for you, and thank you for your support. You're loved. Thank you. Your participation makes this global gospel ministry possible. To share your prayer request or to help bring the gospel to those who have never heard it, call 416-745-1820. You can give at www.peteryoungren.org or send your gift to World Impact Ministries at P.O. Box 62039, RPO, Victoria Terrace, North York, Ontario, M4A 2W1 or P.O. Box 433, Winchester, Kentucky, 40392-9800. Together, let's give everyone a chance to know God's love in Jesus Christ.